Good morning, everybody. It's Mr. Tesler coming at you with a little review of what we've done so far uh, in U.S. history and government class. All right. Um, just going to go through a few things very quickly, uh, a couple of slides, just to get us to make sure that we're on the same page and we're all kind of starting at the same point. We're going to be looking at the foundation of the American colonies, um, particularly the English colonies, a little bit about the road to revolution, and we're going to stop at the Declaration of Independence. So, firstly and foremost, mercantilism. This is the entire reason why the English colonies are established. Remember our little Gregorian chant. Colonies exist to benefit the mother country. The idea of that is that England has set up the colonies to benefit herself. The goal there is to create what we call a favorable balance of trade. In other words, England is going to sell more stuff than it buys. England is going to export more goods to the colonies and other countries than it imports. The way it more or less works is England is the mother, America is the child. America was responsible for sending raw materials to England. England, in turn, took those raw materials, created finished products, which were sold back to the colonies. If you recall previous lessons and previous discussions which we've had, we've made the analogy of a person going to the pizza shop with the cheese, the sauce, the dough, the, sa the sausage, pepperoni, etc., giving it to the folks behind the counter, having them make the pizza for you, cook the pizza, and then sell it back to you, sell you the finished product, that being the pizza. That's the basic principle behind mercantilism. If you look over here, there's a link um, to a discussion by Mr. Hughes, Keith Hughes. Um, shout out to him at Hip Hughes History. You can get a little further in-depth information by clicking on this link about mercantilism. Now, once the colonies were here, once the colonists were here, they established government for themselves, all right? The Mayflower Compact, the House of Burgesses, the New England Town Meeting. These are big questions on the Regents' exam. What they basically mean is that people are governing themselves. So if you see a question about any one of these three things on the Regents, the answer is going to have something to do with early democracy, the idea of people governing themselves or self-government or representative government. What we mean by representative government is simply this. The people vote and decide who is going to speak for them. At this time, property ownership was a big deal and usually determined who would get to be representatives in a particular place, in a particular colony. But what we need to know for the exam is that if we see any of these three things, the question is going to have something to do with representative government, self-government, or democracy. Again, here's another link to Mr. Hughes taking us through the House of Burgesses, a brief explanation. We're looking now to the French and Indian War as we get on the road to revolution. Now, we're not going to go through all of the events here. We're just going to briefly speak to some of the things that took place. French and Indian War takes place from 1754 to 1763. Okay? This is a victory for the English who are fighting to defend the colonists and kick the French out of North America. They win the war. However, in a sense, it begins the American Revolution. England will go into debt as a result of the war. England will then impose or put taxes on the colonies to pay for the war. The colonists were outraged by this because they felt that they were being used. They didn't like the fact that these taxes that were being placed upon them were simply for revenue only. In other words, these were just a way to make money. Again, they felt as if they were being used. The cry was no to or, or no taxation without representation. In other words, the colonists were not given a voice in the English parliament to vote on whether or not they would accept these laws. And this was their rallying cry. More or less what is going to happen over the period from 1763 to 1776 is a series of actions taken by the English government. Reactions were made by the colonists. The situation escalated when England reacted to what the colonists were doing. 
There's a book called Common Sense, which is written by Thomas Paine. This book, which I like to call the Book of Duh, also re referred to as that by Mr. Hughes, and there's a video on that here if you click on this link, will convince the colonists that the time has come to declare independence. Other things that are working towards revolution are beliefs and ideas from a man named John Locke, L-O-C-K-E. His belief is that people have natural rights, things that you are born with that cannot be taken away by anyone. The job of government, according to Mr. Locke, is to protect those rights. When the government fails to do that, when the government abuses its power, the people have a right to get rid of it, which leads us to the Declaration of Independence, which, as we said in previous lessons, is a breakup letter with England. It states the reasons why England is breaking away from England. The king is a tyrant and had to be removed. This document stresses that people are the source of political power. While it is an influence on the Constitution, it is not a plan for government. You will see this, on, this question on the Regents. The Declaration of Independence, repeat, is not a plan for government. Okay, it will have an influence on our government, but will not be a plan for government. It will also inspire equality and other revolutions. That's it for our lecture. I hope you found this informative and helpful. It's Mr. Tesler, over and out.